Well, it's February 2022, time for the Phoenix Metro Area Real Estate Market Update as of January 2022. Well, home price appreciation and interest rates, well, they're always in the headlines and we're taking a look at those. Inflation is now kicking up, so it's time to take a look at what happens to appreciation and interest rates during times of inflation. This looks at home price appreciation versus the consumer price increases over the decades back to the 1970s. The blue bars are the average inflation rate for the decade, and the green bars are the average home price appreciation for each of those decades. In the 1970s, inflation increased at 7.1% in that decade, and home values, well, they appreciated at 9.9% in the same period. In the 80s, it was a bit more balanced, 5.6% for inflation and 5.5% for home price appreciation. The 90s, the home values rose and outperformed inflation throughout that decade. Then came the 2000s that most of us remember. Home prices performed at a very different rate than any other decade. We also had a fundamentally different housing market. We had the oversupply of homes. We had lending standards that were vastly different than they are today. And homeowners did not have the equity that they currently have in their homes right now. After major adjustments in lending, we see the 2010s where home values really started to kick in. Homes started appreciating much faster than inflation, 4.9% versus 1.8%. And then 2020 and 2021, well, you know what's happened here? Massive home price appreciation. Over time, we can see that home values perform better than the inflation rate. That means that someone buying a home today can lock in today's costs and protect themselves against the rising cost of inflation. And this becomes particularly important for anyone comparing renting versus buying. Here's a look back at rental price appreciation versus core inflation going back to the 70s. The blue line is the core inflation rate and the green line is the rental price appreciation. You can see the green line is higher than the blue line in most scenarios, meaning rental prices increased at a faster rate than inflation. There are some ticks down below that blue line. However, over time, it's still more expensive to rent because rental prices rise faster than the rate of inflation. That brings us to appreciation forecasts. Now, the Home Price Expectation Survey is a survey of 100 economists, data analysts, people who project out home price appreciation. In the fourth quarter of last year, the projection for cumulative house appreciation by 2026, so the five years from 2022 to 2026, well, they're divided into two groups, optimists and pessimists. You can see that orange bar on the right. The pessimists are saying that home price appreciation by 2026 will be over 23%. Of course, that's on the low side. The average of all the panelists was 43.3%. And of course, we have the optimists at over 62%. Going forward, three major market factors, home price appreciation, interest rates, and inflation, well, they're all expected to increase. And that adds up to an undeniable fact that it's going to get more expensive to purchase a home. Let's take a look at the rise in mortgage rates, which right now are sitting at about 3.55% on average for a 30-year fixed, as recorded by Freddie Mac. Now, it's been a volatile January leading into February, and this graphic goes back to the beginning of 2020. We're starting to get back to where we started when the pandemic came on in March of 2020. If you take a little bit larger look back to the beginning of 2018, we see the average 30-year fixed movement over time relative to that 3.55%. Higher back in 2018 and 19 started to come down and drop to historic lows during the pandemic. So expectations for the future? Well, Freddie Mac expects 2022 purchase originations to grow from $1.9 trillion in 2021 to $2.1 trillion in 2022. Refinance activity, however, is anticipated to decrease from $2.7 trillion in 2021 down to $1.2 trillion in 2022. So why is this important? Well, there's two mortgage markets, the purchase market and the refinance market. The purchase market is forecasted to grow and the refinance market, well, it's forecasted to constrict, which makes sense. Most people refinanced at record low rates. If you take this rate of 3.55%, even going into 4%, which we'll likely see soon, that's still a very, very favorable rate when you compare it to other decades. 
This shows the average 30-year fixed by decade. Look at the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, and the 2010 compared to that line of 3.55% or even 4%. There's no question, no matter how you cut it, we've had very favorable financing comparatively. This is a look at the 10-year treasury going back to the beginning of December. During that time, the rate of the 10-year treasury yield had skyrocketed close to 2%. Here's why that's important. For the last 50 years, the relationship between the mortgage rate and the 10-year treasury yield has been symbiotic. Wherever the 10-year treasury yield goes, there goes that 30-year fixed rate. The Fed rate does not control interest rates. It can only hope to influence it. That 50-year look back shows that this is the case. So the 10-year Treasury yield metric has proven to be a good thing to keep an eye on as a predictor for mortgage rates. And our last topic, some really good news in the area of forbearance. We started with nearly 5 million homes back in May of 2020, and now we're down to 780,000. And that equates to about 1.4% of all mortgages. So huge progress that shows the forbearance program has really helped homeowners and very, very different than what occurred back in 2008. 38.1% of homeowners exiting the forbearance plan are paid in full, meaning they've made their monthly payments or they've paid off their loan entirely. 43.7% are in workout or repayment plans. That's the section in blue. And this is what was missing back in the 2008 timeframe. Options for homeowners to make a loan modification or a loan deferral or have some type of workout plan with their lender so they can change their situation and stay in their homes. The percentage of homeowners that are still in trouble, that's in the orange section, 18.2% which means that these homeowners are exiting the plan without some type of loss mitigation plan. So how do things compare now to back then? Well, back then, 9.3 million homes went into foreclosure. Here's a look at the last couple years. It shows 422,360 fewer foreclosures over the last year than we would have in a normal year. So if you look at 2017, 18, and 19, the number of foreclosures we had in the normal years of 17, 18, and 19, they averaged just under 300,000. 2020 and 2021, well, they weren't normal years. And this is where the forbearance program came into play, resulting in far fewer foreclosures in each of those years. In 2020, there were 129 foreclosures, which is 161,000 less than what was expected in a normal year. 2021 through the third quarter, which is what we have data for right now, 29,000. So again, massively short. Nowhere near the millions of homes that were going into the foreclosure process from 2008 to 2015. Some major contributing factors to that, one is the cleanup of the lending process. Another is the help from the forbearance programs that we have now that we didn't have back then. And the tremendous appreciation over the last few years has significantly increased equity, which gives homeowners lots of options when faced with financial events. And now for a look at our local market, the Phoenix metro area. We'll start with inventory. The number of active listings really wish there were different news, but it's not. Under 300,000 in 2020 to 2021 to 2022 went from 3608 to 1364 to only 596 homes available for under 300,000. In the 300 to 600,000 range, it went from 4177, 1716. Some good news here, 2466. A lot of that, however, is the increase in price. So the under 300 moved to the over 300. In the 600 to 1 million, 1554, 664, and 986. And over 1 million went from 1669 in 2020 to 905 in 2021 and down to 712 available in 2022. Well, what does that look like in the month over month view? Well, under 300 from January to February, it went from 660 down to 596. 300 to 600,000, it went from 3019 down to 2466. 600 to a million went from 1112 down to 986, and the over 1 million stayed at 712. For prices, we'll take a look at the list price per square foot, and this is year over year. So under 300,000, 
You can see the progression, 144, 165, $178 a square foot in 2022. And 300 to 600,000, 182 to 211 to 241. 600 to a million, 239 up to 265, and then up to 285 ending in 2022. And over 1 million went from 437, 516, and then $652 a square foot. And a month over month view, so from January to February, under 300,000 price per square foot went from 180 down to 178 a square foot. The 300 to 600,000 went from 239 to 241 per square foot, 600 to a million, 278 up to 285 a square foot, and then over 1 million went from 623 to 652 a square foot. Well, that's our February 2022 Greater Phoenix Area Real Estate Market Update.